I'm looking for guidance. I can't take the silence. I was searching for guidance. You keep me level. You know that you're special. Welcome to episode number three of the Visionaries Podcast. Today is a very special episode. Well, to be honest, every episode is special. Um, today I have a guest goes by the name of Fala. Also goes by the name of Fala told me. Yes, sir. Also goes by the name of Lala. Personally, I call him Lala. So that's the one that um, gave to me out of endearment. You know, I love it. That's actually yeah. my favorite. Lala is my favorite. I don't, all. I don't think a lot of people call him Lala. That's why. Am I right? Like, not a lot of people Nobody, call him Lala. I think, I think you, you and Mariam are the only people that call me Lala. Like, Lala. Yeah. yeah. Like, yeah. So basically, everyone on the Visionaries podcast calls you Lala. So yeah. you are known <laughs> on this Visionaries podcast as Lala. But this on this episode, we're going to talk about music and fashion. And we're going to compare the two industries in my opinion, there's a lot of parallels. Um, but before we get into that, I just want to introduce um, you to the world. My world. You're already, <laughs> you're already out there. Uh, but, well. you know, Fulla is one third of the boy band extravaganza, <laughs> which we call <laughs> Love Closely. Oh, yeah. um, they're actually a fashion streetwear brand based in Toronto. Mm-hmm. And they've been doing their thing since 2016. And uh, just tell us, you know, tell the listeners a little bit about yourself. Yeah, my man, thank you so much, bro, for the intro, for having me, For you know, first and foremost. Um, it's a little bit about myself, like Mo mentioned. Um, one third of the uh, streetwear uh, brand, uh, Love Closely, uh, we're an East meets West uh, apparel line. Uh, we make meaningful art, clothing, and um, essentially anything to do with uh, the Middle East and South Asia from an artistic and like lang- linguistic perspective. We uh, try to incorporate that into clothing um, with a concerted message, right? That could be worn, that's meant to be worn by everyone. So not just for people of our color and you know from where we're from, um, but meant to be worn for everyone, to be appreciated by everyone. Uh, aside from that, I dabble a little bit in music, you know, um, do a little production, I manage uh, a couple producers, you know, so we do a little bit of that. And yeah, that's you know, a little bit about me. So your journey and Love Closely's journey, mm-hmm. it started back in 2016, around the same time that I started taking my music, you know, seriously and, and really tried to you know, get it out there. When you look back at yourself in 2016, what would you tell yourself now? Like if you could tell that version of you, what would you tell yourself? Oh man, that's a great question. I would definitely tell myself, uh, it's going to take a lot longer than you expected. (laughs) You know, Uh, don't be tied to an end goal. I think that was, you know, it's another like huge learning, um, like enjoy it, enjoy the process. Uh, I think those three, I would say is like, if I was to go back to like the naive, like 2016, you know, who was, you know, just handing out clothes to like whoever you saw on the street and right. Um, what did you think at 2016? What did you think was going to happen? Like, what was your expectations at that point? Honestly, at that time, I had no idea like what would happen. I just, I, I didn't know because it was such new territory. You know, I don't come from like a clothing background. It didn't come mm-hmm. from like a creative background at all, right? Like the status quo creative. So I really didn't have any expectations. I just felt like it was really cool that uh, myself and, you know, Taha and Nan, uh, the three, like uh, the trio, we, we were like working in clothing and like we had our friends rocking stuff that we were making, right? It was so, fun. They were making it for your immediate... Fun. Group, exactly. Right? Exactly. We're making it for an immediate group of friends. Yeah. It was like, it was like new. It was exciting. It was you know something to do like after work. So, bro, I graduated yeah. and I went straight to like you know working at a bank and I was like, yo, is this it? You know what I mean? Am I like, is this like what my life is gonna be from now on? And then to have right. that. So at that time, it was very just like exciting and 
Uh, there was a lot of unknown, still are, but at that time it was so new. Anytime you start something, and for me, like myself personally, I always have this like vision in my head of like, okay, like whatever I'm going to do, it's going to be big, you know? So I definitely yeah. at that time never thought it was going to be something small or like, I thought yeah. some, you know, things would happen uh, to like get us to like uh, the world stage in some way or another. I don't know how right. that would be. Um, but yeah, it was just new and exciting. Like, yeah, you, you so you mentioned yeah. like, you two, was, was it similar? It was like, it's very similar. Like at the end of the day, it's like when you start, you need encouragement from the people around you. And you kind of, it's kind of like a, a campaign, a political campaign, right? Where you start in your, in your like city and you want to become like the governor of your city or whatever, right? And then you build and then eventually you want to run for office you know what I'm saying? So the yeah, yeah. more you get known in your city, the more you, the more land you conquer. And then it's like, for me, it starts out with like a small circle, maybe three people around me. Like, hey, I made this song. Oh, they like it. Let me make them another song. Mm -hmm. Same way with you guys. I feel like, oh, you like these clothing? Like, you like this crew neck? Let me make you more. Yeah. And then you see it spreads, and then you're like, okay, now you're thinking on a bigger scale. And that fun and that excitement of like seeing your friends rock it is something that you personally, I feel like as a as a musician, and I wonder if this is the same thing with you guys, I feel like you have to go back to that thought process all the time. Because if you start trying to cater to the world, then it's not as fun. Mm -hmm. You want to cater to the people that you actually see and then you have to just bank on the fact that the people that you're around their palette is gonna kind of yeah. mimic the world's palette you know what i mean right right right. no i definitely in the in in the beginning it's a lot like easier right to do that yeah all you have yeah. right all you really have is like your friends and like the, you know that like group of people that you share with because like you align with them in a certain way and then as like for us for example um once we started gaining some steam and you know, orders started picking up in like, you know, uh, in like the UK and like Australia, and Pakistan, like, you know, when like things started picking up yeah. over the years, um, you know, thank God. And obviously like, you know, we just, just by virtue of like working and stuff. Um, at that point, you definitely started thinking, like, okay, am I like, am I like catering to everybody else, you know, cause like mm -hmm. we have the whole audience, but then what about my, what about the people that, you know, were there from, from the jump, like who kind of have been, uh yeah. following and like you know making ma making um or have who have just been there through the journey and yeah it's funny man it's like it's definitely it definitely gets harder but it, it helps to have um that core group you know like like you said right right like, like i love the fact that you still share music with me like unreleased music you're like yo oh, what do you you know like i just made this like what do you think right and it's you obviously you you're still making music for the masses right yeah i yeah. mean clothing for the masses but you you have to have that like core group where you just like you're almost like you, you it's almost like that form of encouragement that you'll get from you know that it's separate from the encouragement that you get when you drop something in like the world it's like that trusted group like you know that yeah. if you make something because i'll get a text from you guys like oh what do you think of these samples yeah i'm like oh these are fire right and it's like you know based off the reaction like okay this is dope like now i can build off this and like same thing with music it's like you need that like you need certain people to hear it while you're making it and it just makes you better like when you're starting out you might not feel comfortable to like share with everybody but like the more the more you share the more you can grow the more you're like less uh emotionally attached to your your shit after you make it the that's the that's how it benefits you in the long run because you, you can't hold it and you can't be getting too you know what i mean by people's reactions you can't pay it no mind that, that that's i feel like uh that piece right there is so important man for anyone that's you know making art music clothing uh, anything really is like the emotional chat attachment to your stuff yeah at the end of the day like that's, you have it holds people back it definitely does it definitely does there's this one moment right yeah which i have a vivid memory of this but i wonder if this comes to your mind when i say this when you guys started out hmm. you were obviously like 
ahead of your time and you took advantage of the fact that you know we can do anything in this generation like we have control of everything mm-hmm. if we want to same way with music like if you want to put out an album you can really do anything you want you don't need a label you guys too you had that mindset there was a f- photo shoot you guys did early on and i believe you were the model for it yeah <laughs> how could i forget <laughs> can you tell us that story oh man so this was yeah this was like 2016 um summer had just finished it was october i believe it was getting a little mm-hmm. chilly in toronto we were like uh some of our friends were visiting from la and like they had like a dslr camera like at the time we already had like one you know what i mean and then they had another mm-hmm. one and we were so amped bro this is like back when like you know views that just dropped so the city was like on a wave too you know what i mean mm-hmm. and um yo we just had this idea like there was like this chance rapper song uh with um with james blake that was like popping off the time too and we're just like yo i don't know it was just like you know it was just like a fun time and then we had this crazy image for a video in our head right so we did the video in like the in center and then we came around like ryerson like then them ends mm-hmm. and then we were trying to do these like obscure shots like alleys and stuff right um and man like i had just hurt my knee and you're you're attacked by a, a yes a, yeah a I toronto, hurt my knee. toronto <laughs> wrote it <laughs> i wrote it right? so i like hurt my knee and like i had like a torn acl so i'm like wow hobbling around and we go into this alley and there's like this garbage can and my boy just makes like a remark he's like yo you know this bear rats like in these ends i'm like nah bro relax yeah. you know so we're literally <laughs> sitting against <laughs> me and, me and uh, my boy are literally sitting against the bed right and my boy goes oh there's a rat and like i'm like yo like fuck off you know there's no rat and then bro i see like this cat sized rat just like run on my side <laughs> like, see a cat sized rat <laughs> there's like a cat <laughs> crap, bro. And oh my goodness, yo, I ran and my knees just like wobbling. And I was just like, bro, this is crazy. I, so I was traumatized, but bro, it was such a fun time. Cause that's it was- what it takes though. Like, <laughs> that's the thing. Like you have to go through that shit. Yeah. Like everybody wants what you guys have, like status, like that feeling of like, oh, we made it. Oh, look at us. Our shit is popping off now, but they don't realize that it doesn't happen overnight and it doesn't happen if you have an ego. Like you have to, what you see in your head, you have to go try to get it made mm-hmm. no matter what it takes. Even if it means sitting in an alley where you know there's bear rats. <laughs> <laughs> like I'm talking cat sized rats and you know that's there, but you are sitting there knowing that you have a torn ACL that if a rat approaches you, it was on site. I don't know. It's just gonna sit on your lap. I guess you can't run. <laughs> <Go sit on. laughs> oh man, not nah, for you real. Know? But it's so it's crazy that you say that, right? Because like when I look back at that time, it was like in hindsight, it's just like so fun. It was such a fun time, you know. Um, mm-hmm. but to your point though, like of like the struggle and stuff, yeah, there's like a daily grind, of course. Um, I remember um this is like another story, like quick one. I remember it like 2018. Uh, was like when we really just like, okay, we were like, okay, you know what? We did this. We kind of like messed around for two years and like, you know, mm-hmm. did some drops and like people were like, it was like getting traction and stuff. 2018 was like the year when we we're like, okay, we have something. Like we have a message. Mm-hmm. We can, you know, we can really create some, I'm like a resources that level up. We had just gotten, mm-hmm. the, you know, access. <laughs> it was like the door was just open, you know, we just opened the vault and like, boom, we have access to all these things and then boom, right? Like our mind exploded and like our roles became more defined, you know, it was just like a defined yeah. type of thing. And um, I remember it just became serious, right? And like every day was like, uh, you know, like things were moving in the right direction, but then the problems were also increasing at the same time. Mm-hmm. And I remember there was like this one day where we had um, like a shipment come in. Uh, so I, like I had just finished work, thought I just finished work, Addy was at school, right? Um, so we finished work five o'clock and went to go grab the shipment. And then that same night, um, we had like uh, a really like important party. At the time we thought it was like, a really important party to go to because there's gonna be all these like celebrities. So we thought, you know, like, you, you know how it is, bro, right? So yeah, basically like- You yeah. always think it's important. It's and important, then, exactly, right? The night passes by and you realize, there'll be another one (laughs) so we pull up and um we're so exhausted right and we're just like we're there and like we're looking around you know i'm looking at daha like bro like 
only you and me get was, you know, like we're the only ones here that understand each other. Like we're not even supposed to be here type of thing. And you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And then this uh, humble the poet, right? So really mm -hmm. big activist poet, you know, super big deal um, in Toronto. He's at this joint and he's just there on his, like on his ones. He's just there alone, like hanging out. Went up and started talking to him. And unbeknownst to ourselves, we just started talking about all our problems <laughs> to him, right? He's like, after this about our clothing line, and then we just started telling him like all this shit that's been going wrong, right? And then we're like, and then we go, oh, do you have any advice for us? And he goes, yeah, are you guys having fun? And then I'm like, holy shit. <laughs> wow, that's some profound shit. Oh, uh, shit, right? And then obviously it wasn't like, you know, it wasn't like Hollywood where like the next day it was like happily ever after, you know? But like that thought right. in our heads, it was like, okay, whatever this is, you know, wherever it gets, at the end of the day, like you have to enjoy what you're doing. Because if you're not enjoying it, then what's it worth? You know? What's the point? Yeah. Right. Because this is a choice. Like it's mm -hmm. our choice to make this music to make these clothes like make clothing to to pursue this so why would we not have fun doing it exactly exactly we're putting the burden on us because we want perfection but we also have to put the responsibility of having fun during it because that's why we started you know exactly exactly but that's so crazy because that's like it's funny because if anyone else had said it right if i was like are you still having fun? Or if some like random person said, are you still having fun? You'd be like, shut the fuck up. But because you, it was humble to poet, you're yeah. like, that was profound. Like, yeah, yeah. oh my God. You, got to you know his resume. Poet. You got to hear from a poet with a book. You yeah. Know? <laughs> because, yeah, because he got a book, because you know his resume, you're like, oh shit, I better listen yeah. to this. This is like... Not only that though, but like, it was like somebody from the outside, you know? And it hit. It was like the right time. Sometimes you need to be like a, in the right place to receive advice. That's also true. You know what I mean? You have to have your ears open to it. Sometimes you can hear the best advice ever, but you're not willing to receive it. And you don't even recognize that it was there. And then sometimes that advice comes back later where you're like, oh, that's what that person meant. Mm -hmm. That's what that's what that meant. Like, I didn't even realize, like, if I had understood then then I wouldn't be stressed out right now. Right. But right. that that's what goes back to just like you have to go through everything. Mm. You have to like go through all the motions of the process to like learn on your own. But like as far as um you know your shoots go, I definitely feel like the that story is one of my all time favorites. <laughs> <laughs> I always remember that because I have the T. So when I see the tea, I think about it. I'm like, this is tough because I know where your head was at when you were making it. And like, you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh man. Yeah. That, that story was like <laughs> so funny, such a good time. So early on your mindset was like, you know, we got to be at every party. We got to, we got this invite. Oh, we heard about this. It was the same mindset of me of like, I have to perform every show I get invited to. I don't care if I'm not getting paid. Um, I just need to be in front of as many people. Mm -hmm. And then you get to a point where you start being able to pick and choose and start realizing your value. And like, okay, my time is valuable, so I'm not going to do everything. I'm going to do the right things, mm -hmm. you know? But early on, what were the kind of little wins that you had? Um early on like ah, there was like so many small moments like we there would be like i think when we when we started was like when the influencer uh route or like the the whole like give me your clothing to influencers had just either started or ha was was in the early days of that it was like 7 16 17 and i remember there was like this one influencer i can't even remember her name now but like it, she had like 130,000 followers at the time right and mm -hmm. She was like the, she was like, we had never reached out to anybody that big, right? And our heads like, that was like so out of our scope. This was like six, like 2017. And um, like, yo, we reached out. I, I remember we like, I, you know, we DM'd her and uh, she reached out and she said, yeah, cool, I'll rock it. And I'll, you know, I'll do it for free. And we're like, and she was like, your stuff is so dope. And at that moment, something like that felt so big, right? You're like, wow, yeah. this person has like this massive following and, you know, and then we like, and then that became like a whole thing for us, like giving stuff out to influencers. And, you know, that was like a whole really big thing. But then I think time with coming back to like music, right. And, um, 
and, and fashion and how like you know they align so much and there's so many like similarities there's always this thing with us like we uh like everyone's a fan of music but like i we all you know we always felt like okay like there is like a connection that this brand has with music somewhere or another like we got to make that connection either you know it's going to be maybe down the line we'll make a project or but for now like let's see how we can let's find this way of like um bringing this uh, idea to the masses through music because if you see your you know your favorite artist rocking um uh, a brand mm -hmm. right and you, you know like it's it's not like a name brand it's not lv it's not gucci it's like a small you know a smaller brand it, 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 we felt like this was like our hypothesis it's gonna like okay help like make it okay for people to rock our clothing basically right right um so like cosine basically yeah yeah like a cosine exactly exactly so um man like the whole um you know the whole like time i think this is just the spring summer of like 17 when like Roy Woods was rocking uh, like literally exclusively love closely on tour. <laughs> like mm -hmm. it was insane. Like, uh, you know, we, yeah. I, I, I think I saw him wear a hat once and I was, like blew my mind. And then he's on tour and like four out of five shows, he's in love closely. And we're getting yeah. pictures on pictures on pictures. I'm like, wow. Like, okay. That moment was like, okay, yo, this man who's like, you know, of, uh, you know, Caribbean descent is rocking a full track suit with Arabic poetry. <laughs> that was nice, you know? And it was like... I'll never forget that. I'll never yeah. forget that. Because what happened was with me, it was like, I think I started performing... Okay, so Roy Woods is a funny story because this is what happened. So I tore my Achilles, right? I remember that. And that's the moment that it was 2016, and that's when I met you guys out in Cali. Mm -hmm. And I was recovering, and I was always contemplating, should I do music, should I not? Um, this is, it's, I'm getting so much pushback from, you know, people around me that are like elders that don't want me to do music. They want me to go, you know, figure out my life and work some right. job that I don't want to do. But like, and all this, you know, these inner kind of battles like what do i want to do and i was like i always love making music so why don't i give it a shot and when i tore my achilles i felt like i was like i really had to think because i was had to work from home i wasn't able to be out and about and all that so i remember um you know you told me that you love my music out there and i was like oh that's dope like this guy fucks with my music. So I was like, let me make sure I buy some of his shit. Right. That's what and it then, was. Yeah. So right. I was like, that's dope. I, he supports my shit. I'm going to support his shit. Most people don't come and tell me that mm -hmm. they're listening to it. They just listen to it or, or they, they're not listening mm -hmm. to it. <laughs> you know, one of the I, other. I, so what was funny at that moment for me was like, mm -hmm. I, I felt afraid to tell you because I was like, I bet you he hears this all the time. Cause I'm like, I didn't. that's so the thing, dope. right? When you're, when you're new, a lot of people don't tell you because they think the same thing that you're thinking and they don't realize that you need that like yeah. sense of approval at that time a lot, because once you get it, then you're like, okay, it's the same thing with getting cosigns or, you know what I mean? Seeing people wear your clothing. It's like, okay, now I can keep going because this person likes it. I'm not just out here making shitty music because that becomes a thought in the back of your mind. You might love it, but then if you don't get feedback you're like hmm, maybe this is bad maybe i should stop right but i got that feeling i was like oh okay this guy fucks with my shit obviously i'm gonna get his shit right so i i got it and i wore it for like a day and then i gave it to my my uh, niece all right and then she posted it and tagged you guys in it right and i remember that right so then um but that's i digress so back to what i'm saying so i got back home and I was like, you know, I'm never going to make uh, make it in music if I don't perform. I was really scared about performing. I never had performed before. So I was like, let me, I was like, let me go watch some show. I was like, I looked up and I was like, who's performing? I was like, Roy Woods is performing in D.C. T like this weekend. I was like, oh, that's dope. So I went and got a ticket to Roy Woods by myself. And I went, it was a small venue. It was maybe like 100 people in there. Mm -hmm. And I went in there, had crutches and a boot 
Ubered out there, uh-huh. hobbled down the steps, and then it was like some you know basement type in right in DC. Uh, I think it was U U Street or Music Hall, something like that. I forgot what it was called, but I was in there and I was sitting right by the bar, and I was on on a stool watching him perform. And I remember when I watched him perform, he was so into his music when he performed. Mm-hmm. And the fact that he was into his music and his performance was amazing. And it was like so inspiring because I just watched him go up there and perform his songs. And it wasn't like he was like worried about anybody in the room. It looked like he didn't even know there was anyone in the room, right? And everyone was just singing along. And then he goes, he stops. He's like, now this one goes out to all my SoundCloud listeners. And then I was thinking like, damn, like I got SoundCloud listeners. So like, it's nothing to be. You actually do have SoundCloud listeners. <laughs> yeah, like my, I got SoundCloud fans, right? Yeah. But that have been listening to me for years. And I used to always think like, because people be looking down on that a little bit, like, oh, you're a SoundCloud rapper. But when I heard him say that, I was like, SoundCloud listeners are people. And they listen to your shit religiously in a different way. Mm-hmm. As soon as he said that, all the kids was just singing songs that I hadn't heard before because I didn't really listen to him on SoundCloud like that. And I was like, yo, I'm going to do this. I'm going to perform. And then after that, I signed up for every open mic, every single open mic in DC, in the DC area. I just signed up and I would pull up in crutches. And my thought process was like, they can't boo me if I'm in crutches because no one's that big of an asshole. So let me get my confidence up while I'm on crutches because they're not going to boo me if I'm shit. And then I did. And then once I got the crutches off, I was just like, let's go. So when I saw Roy Woods rocking the love closely, it was a moment for me because I had just bought my first track suit that summer. Mm-hmm. And it was the same one. And I was like, it was like, these are my brothers. They made this. But then it was like icing on the cake because the artist that's rocking this every night is the artist that inspired me to perform and be fearless. So I wore, I made sure I wore that tracksuit every show I did. And that mindset came with it. Mm. And then from there, it built up my confidence to the point where I remember I was, I was at the gym and this girl came and was like, who just happened to be like following me. She was like, hey, I noticed uh you're doing your thing performing um she was like i fuck with uh your outfit when you perform because it looks like you're protected mm. right and she's not even uh muslim or like doesn't even know about what it means it's, right, right. right and i when i heard that i was like that's tough that's exactly what i want i wanted to feel like that like and that's how i feel it's like that's the power of clothing and music like that's why they go together so well you know no no doubt no doubt beautifully said man i think anyone that's in um you know this space uh can you can, can appreciate that man because like it's a it's performance based space like you, you're going out yeah. and performing in front of people and you're you, you know you're not it's 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 not like there's like a metric right it's not like there's like a number at the end where you got to hit it's more so just like how you make people feel and you're vulnerable and to feel protected yeah, you're doing all that must is like yeah, yeah. must be such a beautiful feeling, you know? Yeah, it's amazing, bro. And I'm just like, every time I see something, I'm like, oh, I can't wait to perform in that. Oh, I can't wait to perform <laughs> in that. You know what I mean? And I just collect them, and I don't even wear them like on a regular day. I know these are like, it's like my, I'm like, I feel like a superhero, and these are like my my costumes. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, like okay, I got them all lined up. Next time I perform, I'm gonna do this one and this one, and mm. you know what I mean. And it's like once quarantine's over, it's a wrap. You already know. It's yeah. a wrap. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's crazy that you say that because like even when we be making clothes, right? We always would think, mm. you know, you're just like throwing in sizing and stuff, and like you know, you're, you're mm. sending it out to like the factory. Okay, like we need like X amount of mediums and X amount of this and that. And I, you know, me personally, I'll consciously think I'm like, yeah, we, I gotta make sure that we get like a medium and a large. And an extra, you know, like, and another size so that Mo has something to perform in. Because, like, if we sell yeah. out something, we got to have something for Mo. Because I know he's in the cop. And I know he's yeah. in the foreign, yeah. right? Yeah, uh, yeah. It's, it's crazy. And, like, I mean, bro, obviously, you've been, like, always, 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 like, just, you know. I mean, quarantine, I uh, might have to get some 
repurchases off of uh you know i got my thigh my, my thighs <laughs> music and we talked about this before it's like music sports and fashion they're all like they all it's a it's a cycle they're all intertwined they're all intertwined right they're all intertwined yeah and you know it's funny that you say that and like i was just thinking while you were saying this like Mm -hmm. um just just because i've been you know with all the time that we have now i've been watching like old like kanye interviews like around like when he dropped yeezus and when like the whole yeezy stuff was happening and how much he was being dogged for like wanting to get you know a deal with uh a major like you know backer mm -hmm. right to like drop his clothing everybody's like yo just drop marriage or just do this and like i look back at it and i'm like man he like he had so much of and it shows now right like now you see right how much of a passion he had for clothing right yeah being as a big of an artist as he was as a you know a musician and a producer at the same time he had such a big passion for clothing and it was just like hard for the world to understand at that time um but like now it shows right and it just shows how intertwined they both are it still came from the same creative person and, you know and then you look yeah. at Virgil right like he's like he taps into music i think he produced like a song with drake and sway lee and then you know jerry lorenzo like he worked on a project with like with with bieber you know uh clothing so it's like so intertwined so tell me about like you and your uh newfound musical path like this is something that you started i think it's been about two years in the making mm -hmm. roughly maybe mm -hmm. maybe less maybe more yeah two years i would say two years yeah, yeah. two years so tell me about that um honestly man like i just always been a fan of music and like listening to music and you know seeing firsthand like literally from high school i remember when drake was on degrassi and then i just knew that you know we used to watch degrassi in school right and like we had like a guidance or like mentor class and we'd watch degrassi we talk about like high school issues right mm -hmm. seeing that guy literally go from there to the biggest artist in the world in front of our eyes right and as much as like people love to call toronto guys like yo toronto man says love drake like yo that ass like he you know yes i you know he's a great artist i love drake yeah. too yeah. you know you can't deny the man's great you can't deny him. Yeah. uh seeing that and then also bro just like seeing you and like you know hanging around you seeing how you make music and the whole process um honestly just like create like open like this like level of curiosity in me and i'm like man i would love to see or like be able to make music you know and some capacity yeah. and you are you are and like some capacity you know at the time i'm thinking yeah. to myself and you know obviously with like love closely um and then with like work at the time like it was you know life was so fast and then the pandemic hit right like yeah. covid and i lost my job and I had all this free time and I reconnected with an old friend, um, goes mm -hmm. by Butters, you know, he produces mm -hmm. music and he was also someone that, you know, was like in a completely different career path and just like learn music. Mm -hmm. Right. So like I resonated with that. Right. For me, it was like, okay, like, let me connect with him. And like, cause he did it from going from like, you know, what he was doing before and, you know, something completely different in like the medical field into yeah. using beats, right. And to make it beat. So that's crazy that time. And then like we locked in and, I was like, oh man, and then, you know, um, even before that, I remember once I sent you a beat. Remember, I was like messing around with like Fruity Loops, and, and I sent you a beat, and like it was mm -hmm. so funny because it was like so trash. But, like the fact that I was so amped when I made that beat was so crazy. But, like it was, you know, like even even the, just that whole process, um, and then from there going to like, um, it's like learning how to make music, and then working with you on a project, you know, um, mm -hmm. you know, producing a song for you for your album. Um, yeah, man, it's just been an amazing journey. I've just been able to peek behind the, you know, the the door of like the process and gain so much respect for musicians and artists. A newfound it's respect. So dope. Have, you know, it's so dope. It's so dope to see when somebody talks about like what they want to do, and then to actually see them follow through, and the level of improvement is just like boom, boom, boom. And I love to see it, and I'm excited to see what you do with it. So. At the end of the day, we're definitely going to see some fashion designer become a big artist. It's inevitable because, in my opinion, music and fashion are synonymous mm -hmm. and they work very well together. 
And if you know one, you have an advantage because you kind of understand the flows of the other. I appreciate having my special guest. Appreciate you Thank coming you. through and talking to me all the way from Toronto. Of course. Hopefully next time it's in person. Yes, the bro, I, long overdue. Long, long, long overdue. But thank you, bro, for having me and hear my perspective. You know, it's always a good time talking to you, my man. And can't wait to link up more shows, more clothing, man. You know what it is, man. All that. Thank you for listening to the Visionaries podcast. If you are listening to this in the daytime, please have an amazing day. And if you're listening to this at night, have an amazing night. Thank you and goodbye. I'm looking for guidance. I can't take the silence. I was searching for guidance.